and this is my channel the good guys guys today's story comes out of san antonio texas and it highlights something that i believe um you know it's something that's going to have to happen um for the entirety of society but before we get into it guys if you guys wouldn't mind leaving a like leaving a comment subscribe Remember, the only way we're going to get to a thousand subscribers, that goal for the channel, is with your help. Also, feel free. Hit me up on Minds, on Twitter, and on Truth Social, and on various other platforms. So, let us dive in to today's story. And car break-ins in San Antonio on the rise. Tonight, law enforcement has a new warning if you're a witness to your vehicle being broken into. Fox SA's Stephanie Esquivel now with details. Homeowners facing gunfire confronting strangers they believed were trying to break into cars on their street. Happening within city limits, it is being handled by San Antonio Police Department, but Fair County Sheriff Javier Salazar says his team is also seeing a rise in homeowners standing up to suspects. Just this week, we've had two incidents where, where homeowners have exchanged gunfire with car burglars. Uh, and, and it's something that we absolutely have to try to get a handle on. In, in law enforcement, we're trying our best. Sheriff Salasad says it's a cycle. Suspects get the weapons they use against homeowners by breaking into vehicles. It's absolutely a trend that we're seeing. And where they're becoming armed is in previous burglaries. So they'll go out and they'll burglarize 10 or 20 cars in a neighborhood. What they're specifically looking for is guns. We know this for a fact. Before confronting somebody, Sheriff Salazar says you have to consider the serious consequences, especially if that suspect is armed. Now, I agree with that last statement. But what about the fact that people are leaving their their guns in their cars because for the very fact that they can't take them to where they're actually going? The sheriff has a point where he is talking about he doesn't want to see the exchange of gunfire because there obviously there may be unintended targets we understand that okay but what he is not also highlighting is that americans these people that have firearms in their car they would not leave them in there if they could take them to their intended or into their final destination. If I'm going to, a, if I'm flying somewhere, guess what? If I can't take my firearm with me, I have to leave it in the car. If I am going to a ball game, if I am going to a concert, if I'm going to a government building, I can't take it there. I have to leave it in my car. If I'm going to work, there are some places where I cannot be armed, especially when we have these stupid rules of gun-free zones. How am I supposed to take my car? How am I supposed to take my gun with me? I have to leave it in my car. So I don't think what he's saying is, yes, these criminals are getting armed from vehicles that they've broken into, but they wouldn't have to, they wouldn't be getting the arms from the vehicles if we didn't have to leave them in our cars. So I'm sorry, that is not, uh, you know, I know I don't think the sheriff meant it as an excuse, but he's trying to state some things. And I think he should also state the obvious as well is that uh, a lot of Americans, wherever they're going, can't take their firearms with them because of all these rules, these gun restrictions, these gun free zones. OK, so uh, I wanted to highlight that. Let us see what else this are, this uh, story has to say. They don't care if they hit you, your home, or an innocent family member that may be inside that residence. So you need to be aware of that before you go 
putting yourself in a situation where you're now drawing fire. So what does law enforcement recommend if someone is vandalizing your car? Sheriff Salazar says number one, call law enforcement. He also recommends installing a camera system with lighting and motion sensors. But if you don't now here is the other part that makes me upset. Guys, I've given you the example before, and it's this, where let's say you are a particular person, you have a family, you are, maybe you don't have a family, but you are living very frugally for a good reason. Or maybe you are living the way you are because you can't afford to do certain things, okay? So someone steals your car. Your car is your livelihood. There are so many people out there who use their vehicle to earn income and if so 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 if some joker comes out of nowhere and steals it that's that's it's gone you don't have the money to go and afford a 500 dollars car payment or a thousand dollar car payment in some cases you don't have that money okay your livelihood is also your vehicle. There are so many people in so many different states. If they don't have a car, they can't do a damn thing. They have to be mobile. They have to have a vehicle. And I'm sorry. Um, I think if this is the case and somebody I see is getting ready to take out my take my car, trying to steal it, I may take my rifle out of my bedroom and start firing I got a one to six scope. I got no problem targeting and acquisition my target. Uh, I may not shoot him, but I'm going to shoot him. Shoot in his direction. Definitely. Put a couple bullets in the hole. Let him get out of the car. And I'm serious, folks, guys. This is this is serious. Your property. You They don't have a right to take it. And you got to do something about it. And waiting for the police to do something is bullshit because these guys, how long it how long does it take for them to get there? How long? What is their response time? By the time everybody here, uh, that far as I know, has seen the movie Gone in 60 Seconds, right? Are they going to be able to recover the car? And if they do, in what state? After he crashes it? You guys understand. Let's hear the rest. You don't want to spend money on security cameras. He says you can use your car's alarm system to scare the suspects away. We're urging people to keep their key fob on their nightstand. In the event you, you see somebody on that camera, you can activate the panic button and that's going to start the siren and, and the lights flashing. Stefan Park with K Auto Sounds has been in the automotive industry for 30 years. He says more drivers are installing alarm systems to their vehicles to boost security. First thing is they call ignition kill. So when they're trying to break in, they cannot start the car. That's a major one they're asking. Park says that depending on your budget, those aftermarket alarm systems offer a range of features. And shock sensors are major things. When they bang onto it, alarm goes on for a minute. And if somehow they break the window and open it, and alarm goes on until you go out there and shut it off. Sheriff Salazar says although letting your neighbors know about break-ins on social media can be helpful, it doesn't replace alerting law enforcement and you should always file a report. In the newsroom, I'm Stephanie Esquivel for Fox SA. Now guys, um, what to say about this? I will have to say that um, I liked all those ideas. I do. I like the idea of having a kill switch. I like the idea of the cameras, um, even a fire, even a dog, even uh, the idea of keeping your key fob next to you to make sure that um, you know you can press the panic button and bring attention to this this person who is stealing your car or a group of people but where is the overall message of a firearm 
Now I get it. In, in some cases, you may not. You have to be very, very shrewd when you use your gun. No question. Okay, but if you are in a situation where it is, I mean, you you've you've way you've wagered your your backstop. You've made sure that you're not going to be hitting anybody. You're not. I mean, there's so many things to go through it, but. In the end, you are defending your property. You have to do that, folks. I am from the position that, yes, you should be able to use force in protecting someone, protecting your property, especially when they are trying to take it by force. You should be able to fire. I I just, I just, uh, I don't, you don't. How can you allow someone to 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 make you poverty stricken? You know for a fact, man, if this thing is gone, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yes, I understand God will provide. Yes, I understand. Yes, I do. But my boss, if you can prevent this. But guys, you guys, I, I mean, what do you guys think? Am I wrong here? Am I wrong? Are these people wrong for defending themselves or defending people who try to steal or defending their property for from people who are trying to steal their vehicles? Are they wrong? That's the more important question. But guys, um, you know what I say at the end of these videos, and I mean it. Good people have guns good people should always have guns there is no question about it because if good people do nothing there will be no good guys mm -hmm.